of why the adults and the elders in the community were not there in that space to um, have ownership in that educational uh, need at that time. You know, why was there a missing gap in, in, in that conversation in that specific community? So then, boom, that creates a definite, a definite need to tell an alternative story around a specific issue and to own it. You know, it's not, it's not just uh, telling a story because you need to tell it, but who's paying for that story to be told? That can also impact the way your, your, your outcome uh, actually ends up being shaped, molded, and delivered to your target audience. So as someone who is passionate around uh, in the arts or whatever, whatever the case is and however you express yourself in history or what have you, I mean, if you are a writer and you're very passionate about, I don't know, uh, uh, sanitation workers and their uh, strike that they had in Memphis, Tennessee that was a part of you know, the Civil Rights Movement and you saw a missing gap to that and you claimed that space and you had some very unique information that connected some dots. Is that going to be uh, owned by your tongue or are you waiting for the highest bidder in terms of your publishing deal with the next corporation that wants to sign a new kind of book with um, missing pieces of history? And does that sponsorship or patronage from the corporations uh, in a critical chapter that you might write, would you maybe omit that for a certain price? Like an association with a nonprofit or the lack of that association has like affected your work? I don't deal with none of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just straight up, I don't deal with none of that. That's just me, you know what I'm saying, just me. I'm, I'm the kind of person, or if you would consider this art, um, I would, I'm at a place where, and started from a specific place where um, I do the art and let whatever comes with that come to me. I think, I think a lot of things have went in different directions, especially around, you know, kind of what we were just talking about when people write their stories on paper and then uh, present them to bodies of govern, you know, governing bodies that usually represent money and then you go through this relationship and you know, uh, you begin to do your art only if you're paid first. Or you, you write your story only if you're paid first. But I think, um, me personally, and there's a lot of sacrifice around that, believe me. But uh, me personally, I, I like to just go and do the work and, and let those relationships, whoever they might be, uh, come after the work is done. Where we are right now, there's just a, a, a huge amount of popular voices that I feel um, that are owned, bought, and paid for. I, I tend to appreciate those who will do the work with or without the money and reach the audience that they need to reach by any means. And maybe they don't have popular uh, you know, appeal with that, but usually, in my experience, those are some of the most valuable uh, contributions uh, to history and to uh, a broader public awareness that we all need to appreciate more. Before I just show a little bit of this, during this, um, during during the process of the beginning stages of framing what the Lost Negroes of North America was going going to be and look like, um, I ended up keeping up with the Minnesota Historical Society around this issue of the Civil War paintings. Remember, did anybody keep up with that? 
the, the, the controversy around Governor Dayton and, and the legislative bodies that wanted certain images of the Civil War paintings and they wanted it, I guess, uh, in the governor's office or somewhere, you know, somewhere hanged in a public space at the Capitol. This is all happening simultaneously as I'm interacting with the History Society and everything. So I'm doing kind of research and I'm finding out interesting stuff around these historic sites. So this, this, this is uh, actually footage from um, a, what we call a historic black neighborhood of uh, South Minneapolis. This particular house right here is not the home, but it was the, on the land of one of those sites. This, this was the home of S. Edward Hall, and he was one of the uh, pioneering uh, black men in the city of St. Paul who started the St. Paul, who was very instrumental in the start of the St. Paul NAACP in the early 1900s, the St. Paul Urban League. And he was uh, a very well-known barber who provided a lot of uh, support and, um, and uh, assistance to those who were migrating from different uh, southern communities or migrating from the east to St. Paul. His home was actually one of those sites. What we ended up finding out in this whole process of striking a relationship with this history center is that the original home on this land was actually raised and it was destroyed without any community input, without public disclosure, without anything. And there was there's documentation uh, that the History Center at that time made a quote-unquote error. This, this house was actually ended up, and it's in the Rondo community, and this house was actually sold for a dollar to the city of St. Paul. The city of St. Paul ended up selling it back to uh, a nonprofit development corporation, and they actually ended up putting a another house on that historic site. So I ended up actually getting, and this is the original home on that site. So this gets back to some of these questions. Okay, so again, to your question, to your question. Here I am, independent filmmaker, doing a, you know, it's a, I, I think this is a monumental project to me, especially around this footage. But in the process of doing this, here comes a relationship with a prestigious institution that seems to be interested in your work. Potentially, there could be some exchange around money to be maybe mutually beneficial. But in this, but in this place, as I move into the institution, I find out, wait a minute, hold on. You mean to tell me that there's only 12 or 13 sites in the state that deal with this kind of history that you're supposed to be accountable for? And in your own documentation, this is what happened to S. Edward Hall's house? And it was an error? S. Ed Hall at 996 Eichelhardt Avenue. Mr. Hall is one of our more celebrated citizens in this community. He's into his 96th year, and we consider him a walking repository of a good part of our heritage. So what does one do in that situation, to your question? Do you, do you, do you know what you know, because you're definitely vested in history, and you're, the implications around this is huge, because the thing at the Capitol was just about a picture. We're talking about a house in, a, in, in, a, in the Rondo neighborhood that's already been demolished by the expansion of the freeway. And you should all know the stories around that. But now this is a house of a pioneering black man that has con contributed 
a huge amount of, of positive <laughs> investment into the community and all of a sudden his house is gone underneath the Historic Society's watch. Do you speak on that? Do you document it? Do you tell that story? Or do you be quiet in situations like this and just kind of hold your truth and you know, maybe just keep on moving forward and hope that the History Society is favorable to you and, you know, maybe we can strike up some kind of financial, you know, mutually beneficial relationship. So, it could go a lot further than that, but saying that, I'm, I'm giving a challenge to you, right? I'm not just talking to me, because you guys are getting ready, obviously, getting to that kind of work. You're going to have to make those kind of decisions yourselves. And if you, if you haven't made them already, they're coming very quickly. And you're going to be in institutions working and things like that. And you're going to have to ask yourselves these kind of questions. Oh, wait a minute. I'm working. Oh, wait. I don't know. Is, am I feeling right about this? Do I, should I speak? Should I hold my mouth? Should I share this history? What benefit is this story to my community or just human beings in general? Is this, is this, is this equal opportunity and, uh, to other situations that may occur? If this was in Hastings, Minnesota, and this was the same thing, and it represented, I don't know, the, the founder of the Hastings Mill in the 1920s, and he employed the hundreds and hundreds of Hastings residents, could this have happened? I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to share that kind of specific example because it touched a lot of the themes that we talked about and challenge you, uh, all of you, um, in your work and in your future endeavors to know that you're going to be a, um, held accountable to be a responsible steward of information or accountability to either yourselves or an institution. and. You're going to have to make those choices too, whether in the arts or in any kind of kind of service or uh, talent or skill that you have. 